Hello, you're very welcome to this session on securing your ServiceNow discovery processes with me, Rob Byrne, a field strategist at One Identity. So the subject here is how to add additional security to our ServiceNow discovery processes. So you're no doubt aware that ServiceNow is a IT operations management platform. And one of the things such a platform does is to go out into the world and discover assets uh, like computers and network devices and routers and various weird and wonderful um, systems out there. Bring that all home into the platform for better configuration management and better management. So as it does that, when it goes to these systems, it's going to need credentials in order to pull back rich information about the platform. The kind of information it's interested in is the operating system it's running, the patch level, the versioning, it is the platform running antivirus scanners, whatever it is that we're interested in keeping an eye on, those are the things that are, are gonna be pulled back. And to do so, for obvious reasons, it needs credentials. Now, to be consistent with uh, basic security principles, but in particular, a zero trust a sort of stance on security, we should not uh, leave these credentials embedded in, in the process itself. We should not leave them, um, you know, lying around, uh, you know, to be to be compromised. Uh, that, that clearly would be a, a significant security risk. So what are we going to do with them? Well, let's take a look at the architecture here just to make sure we understand what we're dealing with. So what we've got here is an instance of, uh, in the picture, is an instance of ServiceNow running in the cloud. And you can see a set of systems that it may well be interested in discovering, as I mentioned, computers, network devices. It could be a cloud system, right? So it could be that weird cloud menagerie of serverless functions, containers. It, it doesn't really matter. There's a lot of stuff out there it needs to discover. Now, the medium by which ServiceNow reaches down into environments, probably on-premise, but, but also in the cloud, is through the medium of its mid-server, which you can see there indicated in the picture. And so the mid server is that active agent that's going to go and do this discovery. So where's the mid server going to get its credentials to go and discover these uh, these systems? Well, what we're proposing here is that you store the credentials in a hardened appliance. Seems reasonable from a security point of view. You store it in a hardened appliance where it's secure and safe. And at the point where the service discovery process needs those credentials, it will check them out it will make use of them and it will check them in. And you can see there the total alignment with a zero trust approach to security and managing these credentials. So that is what we're going to explore in this presentation. So if I go to ServiceNow and if we go to the discovery um, functionality in ServiceNow. Let's have a look at the current state of the world in this uh, instance here. So zoom in a bit. You can see that uh, the discovery dashboard shows us that it's found a couple of computers, a Windows server. That's, that's how it presents it to you. Some of these computers have got other things running on them like IIS, like a website, various things. And if we drill in, this is just the dashboard. If you drill in, you can see it's actually a domain controller. If you drill in there, you can see that it's got all kinds of interesting information about these uh, about this server, like so installed software processes that are running. It's only been able to do that because it's picked up the credential from one identity safeguard. It's used it to log in and retrieve the information. So let's go back to our discovery schedules. Here's a, dis a discovery schedule that discovers configuration items. It uses the mid server that's in the environment, in this environment. So that's as I explained earlier. So let's kick off one of these discoveries in a kind of on demand kind of a way, you normally you'd schedule it. So that will go off. So while ServiceNow is using the mid server to go in and discover any new assets in that environment, let's have a look at what that looks like on the one identity safeguard side. So on the one identity safeguard side, you can see that we have a few credentials here that are available from the application to application API interface in Safeguard. In other words, one identity safeguard can expose some credentials 
to appropriately authenticated and authorized uh, users that, that connect to the API and can retrieve these. So <clears throat> if you have a look, there's a kind of obfuscated API key. And if you are appropriately authenticated and authorized and you present this key, then Safeguard will return to you the account name and the account password so that you can log into that to that asset. And so it's it's root test test admin. These are just the credentials that we have available here. So let's go back to service now and see how it's got on. Go to the dashboard. You can see if you remember, it's it's discovered a, a Linux server. So it's just going on that. It's discovered a Red Hat Linux server. And again, if you drill in it's it's got all the various information about about that so it's done that all the logging of course you've got logging available to you here you have logging available from from all of this uh discovery status so you can see all the logging that's happening here so service now will will log all the activity from from the mid-server and you can see as it goes through nicely discovering those uh, devices so what does that actually look like in terms of you know the logging and so on? So just to actually see how it's working, if we go back over here, these are the logs on the mid-server side that are that are coming out. Now we're not going to obviously read through all of the logs, but the main point to say is that there is clearly a wanted entity component here that's running, and it, it is the credential resolver, and this is the the one identity safeguard specific piece that knows how to call out the safeguard and retrieve the credentials. So you can see here, for example, that it's found an account match for a specific credential ID. And if you have a look through the log file, you'll see where it recovered the Linux server account and and uh, and password, so that it was able to log into that Linux server and do that discovery. Now, in terms of what that little credential resolver actually looks like, go through a whole code review. But basically, it's uh, this is the architecture that ServiceNow requires of us. It's actually um, quite a quite a small piece of Java code that it gets wrapped as a jar file and gets loaded into the into the, the ServiceNow platform. <laughs> then uh, the mid server then picks it up and uses this to to connect into into one of the empty safeguard. Okay, so let's have a quick recap. What have we seen in this presentation? What we've seen is that one identity safeguard can significantly enhance the security of your ServiceNow discovery processes. It does this by providing a hardened appliance in which we store the credentials that are needed to, to perform the discovery tasks. And we only check those credentials out from the appliance when they're needed. And of course, when we're finished, we check them back in. So that as a general security principle, but in particular, as an alignment to a zero trust approach is is clearly the way to go. Um, certainly better than embedding these uh, credentials in processes or leaving them, let's say, lying around in order to be compromised by malicious actors. So for a security, uh, for an IT operations platform, running automated discovery and automation is absolutely key in staying on top of our rapidly changing IT landscapes, but doing those automated processes in a secure way is, is absolutely fundamental to taking a robust and secure stance in, in, in how we, we stay safe in, in, these, in these times. So uh, I would say just to finish that um, you may have multiple credential stores in place here. So for your DevOps uh, service fabric type uh, components, you may have a DevOps oriented uh, is a credential store in place. And that's absolutely fine. You can have multiple stores, but what's clear is that one identity safeguard has an important role to play as a credential store of choice for securing a lot of the components in these environments. So I hope you found that useful and thank you for your attention.